another day, another cash mountain. Nearly 50 crore rupees in cold black cash. Five kilograms of seized gold ornaments. Numerous property papers. The big Bengal black buck bust. BJP guns for Mamata herself. Game over for Mantri Partha. Well, it's game over for Mantri Partha, but he continues to be a general secretary and member of Mamata's Trinamool Congress. He's head of the disciplinary committee, which is a joke in itself. And the mountains of cash linked to him are getting higher and higher and higher. I'm going to show you just how high. Right here on 5 Live, I'm Shivaroor. These are the headlines. Bartha Chatterjee sacked as Bengal minister. India Today tells you one hour before everyone else. Mamta Banerjee says she and her party are very strict. Clearly not strict enough. Smriti Irani and Sonia Gandhi in a furious parliament face-off over Congress's Rashtrapatni Jai. BJP says Congress chief abused the minister. Congress accuses Smriti of heckling misbehaviour. BJP seeks Sonia's apology after Adhir Ranjan calls President Draupadi Murmu Rashtrapatni. Under fire, Congress MP says he will personally say sorry to the President, not to BJP chores. Two accused arrested over murder of BJP worker Praveen in coastal Karnataka. Cops probing PFI link. Chief, Chief Minister Bombay wants ban on the radical outfit. India Today accesses CCTV images of the murder plot. Ugly political stalemate over Modi and Stalin poster at the Chennai Chess Olympiad that kicks off in an hour from now. Day after BJP glues Modi posters, DMK workers blacken them. Ugly politics, Modi will be landing at 6. If it isn't an India Today news break, it's not worth looking at. And that's the reason why India Today broke the news of Partha Chatterjee sacking as a West Bengal minister a whole hour before anyone else, making an absolute fool of political reporters and editors in other news organizations. Partha Chatterjee has been relieved from his ministerial duties. He's been sacked from all the ministerial portfolios he holds. Bamta Banerjee has also spoken out on Partha Chatterjee's sacking. Six days after India Today broke those incredible images of the cash found in his friend Arpita Mukherjee's house. Mamta Banerjee says the Trinamool is a very strict party. Bundles of cash have been recovered from a girl's house. Cash which is being shown everywhere. This will not change the perception of the party. That's what she hopes. There is a big play will not reveal at the moment says Mamta Banerjee being especially mysterious. She's been politically cornered over six days into cutting her losses and sacking one of her closest ministers from his ministry portfolios. Partha Chatterjee has been sacked from the government, but he is still a member of the Trinamool Congress itself. India Today's news break about his imminent sacking came one hour before the axe actually fell on Partha Chatterjee. He continues to be in enforcement directorate as does his, uh, his close friend Arpita Mukherjee who is a Bengali actor. Both are in serious trouble over the incredible vulgar mountains of cash that have been recovered from Arpita's residence. The link to Partha Chatterjee, the enforcement directorate is investigating at this point of time. But the link to Mamta Banerjee is what the BJP is going after, saying that the Chief Minister of West Bengal, by sacking the minister, cannot wash her hands of this disgusting 
cash scam. It was a cash for job scam as part of a recruitment scheme under the West Bengal government. And therefore, the opposition BJP says, how can Mamta Banerjee simply distance herself from this absolute outrage? Bartha Chatterjee is in custody. He is still being questioned. Just yesterday, even more cash was recovered. Today, gold ornaments have been recovered. A total cost viewer of 50 crore rupees in material cash and gold jewellery. That is the kind of value we're looking at. 50 crore rupees spread across just two properties. How they smuggled that much cash into that residence of Arpita Mukherjee's is something that I'm going to be breaking to you here on India Today in just a few minutes from now. Partha Mukherjee being dropped from his ministry portfolios is only step one, but it has only galvanized the opposition BJP even more because he is still a member of the Trinamool Congress. Let's go across to India Today's Indrajit uh, joining us live uh, from uh, Kolkata. Indrajit, the axe finally falling on Partha Chatterjee. We reported one hour before the axe actually falls. What about uh, his membership of the Trinamool Congress? Is that going to, is that axe going to fall as well? Well, uh, you know, there is a lot of possibility that he will be axed from uh, his party post because uh, he is a secretary general of the party. Uh, he has been with the party from the very inception. Uh, so he is very, very crucial to the entire operations of the Trinamool Congress. Now, whether he will lose his primary membership of the party, that's not very clear. But there is a massive possibility that he will also be removed from the post of Secretary General of the Trinamool Congress. Uh, in fact, Shiv, what is crucial is that the Trinamool Congress Disciplinary Committee is uh, in a huddle right now at the Trinamool Congress headquarters in Kolkata. And Patsha Chatterjee was one of the members of the Disciplinary Committee. So it's ironic that the same disciplinary committee uh, is meeting in, uh, in Kolkata right now to take a decision on him. And it will be chaired, of course, by Trinamool Congress uh, uh, MP Abhishek Banerjee. So just a short while back, Mamta Banerjee spoke out saying that Partha Chatterjee has been removed from the cabinet. We can expect very soon Partha Chatterjee to be uh, removed as Secretary General of the party as well. Indra, stay with me. You know, just the mountains of cash that have been recovered from Arpita Mukherjee's residence, all of it linked to Partha Chatterjee, the minister who's just been sacked, is something that has not only gone viral, but it has riveted viewers across the country. Imagine a huge pile of cash of this kind found in just one room of one house. 21 crores in cash is... This is what it actually looked like. We've recreated that cash pile because the size was around this. This is what the Enforcement Directorate recovered from just one residence of Arpita Mukherjee on day one. After that, 27.9 crores in cash was recovered on July the 27th. Once again, those images were first here on India Today. That's what 27.9 crore rupees in cash actually looks like. So two big cash hauls, first the big mountain, the huge pile, ugly pile of cash, and then the 27.9 crore, both adding up to just under 50 crore rupees. But how many notes, kitne note the isme? Let's tell you, 50 crore rupees approximately has been recovered from those two properties. There were 2,000 rupee notes and there were 500 rupee notes. If you calculate it, 125,000, 2,000 rupee notes adds up to 25 crore rupees and half a million, 500,000, 500 rupee notes adds up to the other 25 crore, making a total of the 50 crore that we're talking about. Of course, there was some gold jewelry as well, but if you're curious about the number of notes that have been recovered, that's what those numbers really look like. It's really sickening, it's vulgar, it's incredible, and it's taken six days for this minister to be sacked. He's still a member of the Trinamool. Now, the Enforcement Directorate is only intensifying its probe into this big Bengal cash for job scam. In an overnight raid, the agency recovered nearly 28 crores. That's the latest haul from another of Arpita Mukherjee's flats in Bulgaria. Gold and jewelry worth 4.31 crore was also seized. With this, like I said, Nearly 50 crore rupees in total has been recovered from Arpita's home. Here's the very latest on these riveting, riveting mountains of cash. 
Endless bundles of cash, which took the ED 10 hours to count, using multiple cash counting machines loaned from banks. Huge pile of gold ornaments. It was another day of ED raids and another cash mountain surfacing. The second raid on Partha's aid, Arpita's second home, helped the ED net a massive 29 crore black cash haul. Apart from 5 kgs of gold ornaments, the ED stumbling upon nearly 50 crores in total from Arpita so far. The agency had to use 10 large trunks to transport the seized cash. Cash was kept uh, inside the bedroom, not only that, some uh, cash was recovered from the bathroom. It was kept uh, in, a, in a cabin, inside a cabinet of wash basin that reveals, uh, you know, there are many more uh, to unfold it and enforcement director uh, uh, is probing this matter and, uh, the, and opposition's claim, this is just tip off an iceberg. The BJP saw clear role of Mamta herself calling the chief minister a thief who looted young job aspirants using her minister. The Mamata Benerji 100% joined with Partha Chalari Ji, with the whole scam. It was not joined with the scam. You will not get money from the top. You will not get money from the top. And you will say, brother, we are not getting money from the top. Mamata Benerji is a big deal. Mamata Benerji is the most important part of the country's history. The ED has revealed that Arpita is cooperating with the probe, adding that Arpita has even admitted that the cash pile indeed belongs to disgraced TMC Neta Partha Chatterjee. With Manish Pandey in Delhi and Rithik Mandal in Kolkata, Bureau Report, India Today. And now if you've been wondering how 50 crores in cash was smuggled into just a couple of residences, we've now exclusively accessed information on how Partha Chatterjee's aide, Arpita, managed to hide nearly 50 crore rupees in cash in her flats without being detected so far. Now, the bags of cash were stashed inside cupboards. The cash was wrapped in white paper and tape to evade detection. Packets with the 2,000 rupee denomination were present as we've shown you. The cash packets were stashed behind many layers of clothes. That's how they were discovered, we are told. Cash bundles of about 50 lakh rupees each were stashed behind the clothes. Jewelry worth about 4.31 crores was kept in lockers inside the residence. And there was a West Bengal government envelope also containing a few lakh rupees in cash. So these are the detailed breakup uh, pieces of data of how Arpita Mukherjee, allegedly in collusion with Partha Chatterjee, the sacked minister and Mamta Banerjee's close aide, was hiding such a monumental amount of cash. Half a million 500 rupee notes, one lakh 25,000, 2,000 rupee notes, Lots of gold jewellery, all stashed in cupboards, wrapped in white paper and tape and hidden behind clothes in a series of cupboards. That's how this stuff was actually discovered by the Enforcement Directorate when India Today first broke those images last Friday. Arpita Mukherjee and Partha Chatterjee continue to be in Enforcement Directorate custody for at least the next few days. His sacking of minister uh, as Minister of West Bengal makes his situation even more precarious. It looks like, as Indrajit Kundu was just telling us, that his uh, membership of the Trinamool Congress is also likely to be uh, taken away from him uh, in a few short minutes or hours from now. We're sensing that the rug is being pulled out from one of the closest ministers to Mamta Banerjee. Mamta Banerjee has gone into full crisis damage control mode. She says her party is a very strict party, even though they took six days to sack a minister uh, from whose friend's house they've, uh, you know, the ED has recovered 50 crore rupees in just the last few days. So we leave it for our viewers to decide how strict that actual party is. But let's go across to India today's Munish Pandey, who's been leading a crack team of reporters uh, who've been bringing us and breaking every layer and every angle and twist and turn of this saga. Remember, it was Munish who broke those first images last Friday, six days ago, of that monumental mountain of cash. Munish, 
Uh, Partha Chatterjee axed as minister. What next as far as the Enforcement Directorate investigation is concerned? But before we come to that, Munish, you've brought us details of how this cash was actually, you know, uh, stealthily taken into those houses and then hidden in that very expert kind of manner. Jamal Shu, as far as uh, the investigation into this case is concerned, what sources within the enforcement directorate have told India today that not only Partha Chatterjee, but there are several TMC leaders who are under scanner of the enforcement directorate. At least in next one week, two persons are going to be arrested by the enforcement directorate. There are several people linked to Partha Chatterjee who are being summoned. Their statements have been recorded. But as far as the evidence is concerned, Remember, Shiv, the enforcement directorate was uh, acting on this case since there was the order from the Calcutta High Court to act on this case. But after those raids, the amount of cash they recovered, and especially the envelope belonging to the Ministry of uh, Partha Chatterjee, it was hmm. a clinching evidence for the enforcement directorate. And when they started recording statement of Arpita Mukherjee, you know, she is the one who first confessed that this money belongs to Partha Chatterjee. So as far as their investigation is concerned, they are quite confident that they have got their right guy and soon they will be arresting many more people in this case. Now, as far as how this money was being hidden into those apartments, remember two apartment, apartments belonging to Arpita Mukherjee have been raided by the enforcement in the state in last one week. Yeah. In the first apartment of uh, uh, you know Arpita Mukherjee, the money was kept in the cupboards only in one room and that room was kept completely locked. No one was allowed to go inside apart mm. from Arpita Mukherjee. But in the second flat, this money was kept in a very tidy and neat manner, packed in a in a envelope, white color envelope, looking like a parcel in a very cheap bag. I you know the officers who raided those premises, they have told me that they even didn't suspect that there could be such a huge amount of cash uh, lying in those cheap bags. Yeah. But they were certain uh, lockers also the ed had to uh, you know break those lockers and then they record not only 50 crore cash but also uh, so so manish five. is it are you saying it's possible that the enforcement directorate could summon or possibly even arrest other members of the government or the trinamool that's a possibility there is a very high possibility issue and this is uh, uh, something which i've been told by a very very senior officer of enforcement directorate what ED is claiming at this point of time is that Partha Chatterjee is one of the person who was involved in this entire recruitment scam. But after this recovery of cash, after recording several statements, they have got need of other scams also in the government. They will follow the lead, but only in the uh, teacher's recruitment scam, they have come across several people who are still part of the government. There are several uh, leaders of PMC who are still active, but they might have played a very important role as far as this entire scam is concerned. So there is a high possibility that many people connected to the TMC party, there are many people connected to Partha Chatterjee, they will not be only questioned, but also they might be arrested in coming days. Very, very big piece of breaking news that uh... That Munish Pandey breaking here on India Today as always, that there could be more people from the government of Mamta Banerjee or the Trinamool Congress who could be summoned by the Enforcement Directorate or possibly even taken into custody for questioning in this entire cash for jobs racket. It doesn't stop with Partha Chatterjee or Arpita Mukherjee. It could go higher. This could get much, much more embarrassing for Mamta Banerjee. We'll have to see how high it goes and how far it goes. Munish, breaking that story is always first here on India Today. I want to get a political, uh, uh, you know, a bit of political insight into how Mamta Banerjee is going to be navigating this. Rajdeep Sardesai, our uh, consulting editor, has been looking very closely at all these unfolding developments. Rajdeep, Partha Chatterjee finally sacked as a uh, you know, minister in the Mamta Banerjee government. How do you see you know, how Mamta is going to navigate the rest of this entire crisis for her and her government? Well, it is no surprise, uh, Shiv, that Partha Chatterjee has been sacked. The pressure was building on Mamta Banerjee to act against her loyalists. And because he's been loyal to Mamta Banerjee through good times and bad, that's perhaps one reason 
why uh, Mamta Banerjee took so long to act against the minister. Because really, prima facie, given the fact that he's been arrested, given the mountains of cash that have been found at his uh, aides' residences, uh, it was becoming untenable to retain the minister. There was pressure from uh, within the party and more importantly from outside, from the opposition BJP, uh, that was proving to be an embarrassment for Mrs. Banerjee and she had no option really but to sack her minister to try and distance herself and almost disown Partha Chatterjee. Rajdeep, you know, how is this uh, affecting the kind of feud that we saw within the Trinamool, you know, before the actual sacking? We saw people like uh, Kun Kunal Ghosh speaking out. There's word of, you know, factions breaking out over, uh, you know, Partha sacking. Now that he's been sacked, what next within the Trinamool? I think... This is a very interesting question, Shiv. Uh, the factionalism within the Trinamool Congress that has been playing out now for several months. Uh, there is a sense that there are the old loyalists like Partha Chatterjee around Mamta Banerjee. And then there is the new guard around her nephew, Abhishek Banerjee. Now, while uh, some of the uh, talk of friction may be exaggerated, there is a battle uh, within the party clearly, particularly over the powers that Abhishek Banerjee wields, which the old guard have felt at times has meant sidelining or marginalizing them. And you could argue that with Partha Chatterjee being exposed, being arrested, the Abhishek Banerjee faction in a way uh, gets uh, more dominant. Uh, but remember, Abhishek himself has ED inquiries going against him. So in a sense, I think the party will have to come together at a time where the BJP uh, wants to exploit these divisions and will see a wounded Mamta Banerjee in a way as someone who they wish to target. So perhaps the fear of the BJP will eventually, or at least for now, uh, unite these factions. For how long? We don't know. There's a lot of buzz in Kolkata about more ministers who could be in the firing line of the ED. So we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out. Rajdeep, always appreciate you. And the big chess Olympiad in Chennai is all set to kick off in just about half an hour from now. Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi will be landing there very shortly. Let's just listen into some of the sounds coming in from the build-up event.
An absolutely beautiful rendition of Ma Tujhe Salam by A.R. Rehman, one of his most famous songs being played at the Curtain Raiser event for the Chennai Chess Olympiad that opens in just a couple of moments from now. Okay, that's the compere there speaking in Tamil. I want to just go across to our reporters, Pramod Madhav and Akshita, both on the ground at the Chennai Chess Olympiad. Uh, uh, Pramod, quickly coming to you first. Beautiful songs coming from the inside. Everyone waiting for Prime Minister Modi and the Chief Minister to arrive. It absolutely is, sir, and that's a song called Tai Bande Vanakam by A.R. Rahman, and it is a song that actually, uh, it, it is an amazing song, and in fact, we are standing outside, and everybody here are waiting for the Prime Minister. In fact, on the other side, a large crowd is uh, trying to cross over now also. So many people have gathered to welcome the Prime Minister, and the event as scheduled has started, and it's just a, like another 500 meters from here inside Nehru Stadium, where a large, a grand event has been organized for this 44th FID chess olympiad that is going to happen that is happening in uh, uh, Chennai's Mahabalipuram. In fact, the chief minister has very clearly mentioned that it will be made monumental and the emblem the symbol for this uh, particular uh, olympiad is a stallion dressed in the, uh, the, uh, 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 the traditional shirt and dhoti and uh, with a tattoo on his hand called as Dumpy whereas here the crowd has gathered they are coming over here and they are waiting to welcome the prime minister you could see the banners and everything Everybody waiting eagerly to see the Prime Minister as well. This is an event that is being promoted by the central government and the state government to make and uh, uh, among the people of Chennai, it has garnered a large support already. People have been waiting here since 4 a.m., 4 p.m. eagerly for the uh, uh, Prime Ministership. Stay, stay with me, Pramod. I want to go to Akshita as well. Akshita, what are you seeing? Fever pitch, huge you know, transformation in Mahabalipuram for the Chess Olympiad. Everyone waiting for the big netas to arrive as well. That's right, Shiv. You know, through the day, the city of Chennai has been black and white. Now add saffron also to it. Scores of BJP workers who gathered here, waiting for Prime Minister Modi to touch down. You can see all of the workers gathered here in large numbers, chanting Bharat Mata Ki Jai slogans. Who thought, Shiv? that you'd hear Bharat Mata Ki Jai slogans in the city of Chennai. But the chess Olympiad excitement is clearly here. You can see all of it, uh, all these BJP workers gathered here to welcome Prime Minister Modi. He's expected here any moment now. Uh, and look at the kind of grand setup that's been put ahead. You know, there's a temple-like setup right here, bang in the middle of the road shift to welcome Prime Minister Modi. And you've got scores of young girls, Bharatanatyam dancers, all gathered to welcome the Prime Minister. He's expected here in about five, ten minutes, after which the ceremony also, which you've been showing us at the Nehru Stadium, will kick off with the Prime Minister's address as well. So you see all these little girls dressed up, decked up. They're going to be there to personally welcome Prime Minister Modi uh, with song and dance. They've been performing beautiful Bharatanatyam steps here, all together all in unison and you can see all of these uh, musicians so also mridangams here so it's it's you know festive atmosphere something like we've never seen on the streets of chennai we've been reporting through the day shiv on the kind of color and how literally the whole city has turned black and white and now along this entire stretch through which prime minister modi will come down uh, and wave to the crowds hold this very symbolic road show you're seeing it turn completely saffron as well huge security deployment as expected expected along this entire stretch. But while we've been reporting on all of the politics that's been playing out, Shiv, the center versus state, who takes credit, etc. At this moment, it's about the excitement for the Chess Olympiad, the recognition that this is a historic event. And every single person in the state of Tamil Nadu right now, extremely, extremely excited. It's palpable in the air as well. It's really palpable and uh, lucky you, Akshita, getting to be there on such a prestigious day. Tamil Nadu has a you know, wonderful uh, legacy and a connection with chess. You've got Rajnikanth sitting in the audience there. Let's just listen in. Let's just dip in for a moment and listen before we go to Akshaya. Can we just dip in? There's Rajnikanth. You can see many other actors. He's there with his family. Live pictures from inside of the superstar. Let's get some audio before we go to Akshaya. <laughs>
inaugural event let me take you outside for a moment and then i'll come right back i promise i don't want you to miss any of these wonderful images artists performing their dances lots of music ar rehman is there rajnikanth is there lots of lots of action happening mk stalin the chief minister is there the prime minister are going to be arriving in just about 30 minutes from now akshaya is right outside akshaya what are you seeing all the mood there with you atmosphere what we can see a lot of celebration lot of ways in which uh, you know the bjp and the state government have arranged to invite and welcome prime minister narendra modi here let my camera person show you uh, you know the kind of decorations that they have done on the way uh, to the jawaharlal nehru stadium this will be the road through which uh, you know we'll be seeing prime minister narendra modi passing seen that uh, you know um, images of lord shiva and durga devi have all been set up in a state like tamil nadu which is always talking about uh, you know neutral dravidianism and not about any kind of religion and here we are seeing the bjp show of strength i have with me the bjp is a youth wing president vinod vinod can you tell us the kind of arrangement that you have made here are uh, we seeing that huge celebrations are out here on the day of the chess olympia so the prime minister had come about a couple of months back to chennai what we saw more than uh, two months uh, two months back the crowd today is almost double of what was there people are so enthusiastic the central government the narendra modi government which has always encouraged sports at a very big level has provided the opportunity for tamil nadu to host the uh, chess uh, conclave and it's of uh, huge prestige and importance to the country and to tamil nadu you know that a time when we seeing the poster wars and things between the state and the center of a sort between the bjp and the dmk to be more precise uh, are you showing that the bjp is making its inroad much more stronger than what is expected see it was very silly of the state government to not include the photos of the prime minister today even the uh, high court has come down heavily on the state government for not including pictures of the prime minister and the president of india this is a very prestigious event this event an event of this size needs both the support of center and state governments to happen so in such a scenario it would have been nicer it would have been more cordial and there are people from 188 countries coming now all these people from abroad all these international players everyone knows narendra modi in that sense it is very important to showcase our prime minister he is not just a bjp leader he is the prime minister of india so in that scenario in that case it was very important that the state government should have done this by themselves now bjp has put up several hoardings posters flags everywhere we are welcoming our prime minister we are so proud and happy that tamil nadu has the opportunity today that was vinoj talking to us he's a youth wing leader for the bjp in the state of tamil nadu we can see the kind of preparations and the show of strength that has been put forward by the bjp here this is also a kind of a message that the party is trying to send in and we'll be seeing that in minutes from now prime minister narendra modi will be passing through this very point uh, shiv let me remind you this was the very location last okay. time where prime minister narendra modi had stopped his vehicle and waved at the crowd and these children were performing even last time as well uh, so you know a lot come back to you i want to go back inside the stadium let's let, let's let, let's put the sound up on those beautiful performances
Minister M.K. Stalin in the house. The Chief Prime Minister will be arriving very, very shortly. I don't want our viewers to miss any part of this wonderful audio, visual and this performance. Let's just soak it in. Let's play it out for you. மாதிரி பிரமிக்க வைக்கும் ஒரு பர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் பார்த்து அதை வர்ணிக்கிறதுக்கு கண்டிப்பா வார்த்தைகள் இருக்கவே முடியாது ஜஸ்ட் ஒன் லைன் யூனிட்டி இன் டைவர்சிட்டி வேற்றுமையில் ஒற்றுமை தர் இஸ் அவர் இந்தியா தர் இஸ் அவர் கண்ட்ரி அவர் மதர் லேண்ட் லேடிஸ் அண்ட் ஜென்டர்மென் டஸ் இன் திஸ் மோமெண்ட் ஜஸ்ட் மேக் யுவர் ஹார்ட் ஸ்வெல் வித் ப்ரைட் அண்ட் ஃபார் ஆல் ஆர் பார்ட்டிசிபன்ஸ் வித் லைக் டு வெல்கம் இன் ஈச் அண்ட் எவ்ரி ஒன் ஆஃப் யூ to our motherland our india vanakkam and welcome once again aduthadaga pannattu saduranga kootamaippin naattu pan paadalukkaga anaivariyum thaalmayudan elundhu nikkumaru kettukolgirom ladies and gentlemen we'd like to request all of you to rise for the fide anthem Thank you ladies and gentlemen you may be seated moving along may we now invite india's woman chess grandmaster ms kono rohampi to administer the players pledge Arangam Nirendra Kai Tattalgalode and let's welcome Ms. Konu Rohampi. Over to you ma'am. In the name of the athletes, we pledge to participate in the 44th Chess Olympiad, observing and respecting the FIDE rules and regulations of sportsmanship and fair play. As chess players, we promise a sport honoring all participants, our teams and the FIDE charter. Thank you all for the love and support. Thank you ma'am. Thank you very much. Next, we'd now like to invite on stage Mr. Laurent Freud, Chief Arbiter of the Olympia to administer the Arbiter's pledge. In the name of all arbiters and officials we pledge 
that we shall officiate in the 44th Chess Olympiad with complete impartiality, administering and honoring the FIDE rules which govern chess in the true spirit and principles of fair play and sportsmanship. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got first images of Prime Minister Modi who's landed uh, in Chennai. He's going to be at the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in just a short while from now. He's wearing a Veshti with a checkered border. You know, very much in the spirit of the Chess Olympiad. Uh, Akshita, I don't know if you've been able to look at this picture. I, I hope you have been able to see it on your phone. But Prime Minister Modi, you know, uh, 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 ever the politician keeping the circumstance and the event on top of his mind, wearing a chessboard veshti. Presenting to you the very talented Lydian Nadasar. Shiva, I told you earlier, a couple of hours ago, that this was going to happen because uh, yeah. you know, I had a conversation with the BJP and they were very mockingly and sportingly saying, we're going to gift Prime Minister Modi this Veshti with the, uh, you know, ch a chessboard essentially yeah. on the Veshti. So they were planning to gift it to him. But they did tell me that we're not sure if he's going to wear it because, you know, this is a very last moment decision. But it looks like the Prime Minister has obliged. He's decided to get into the spirit of the Chess Olympiad and hence is sporting the uh, colors that have essentially become synonymous with Chennai now, black and white. He's expected here any moment now. People are gathering in large numbers, but the fact that the Prime Minister also has decided to indulge in the spirit of the Chess Olympiad and how so many parts of Chennai Shiv have now turned completely black and white. You've got a road imagined that's a chessboard now. So considering all that's been happening, the huge buzz that we've been seeing for weeks now, it looks like Prime Minister Modi has also gotten into the spirit. He's touched down in Chennai. Uh, he is in fact from INS Adyar, which is very close to where I am. He's going to be driving down this entire stretch along this entire road where hundreds of BJP workers have also gathered. There's uh, a huge setup here. People, in fact, from across Tamil Nadu have gathered here. BJP workers have all come together from across the state to uh, give a vanakkam to Prime Minister Modi. Uh, you know, you can see so many uh, uh, boards, uh, posters all around me hailing Prime Minister Modi, calling him uh, the king of the BJP, the one-man one army, the grand master of India as well. So the BJP has gone all out here. Can you believe, Shiv, a couple of years ago when we were reporting in Chennai that you'd ever see this kind of a massive BJP show of strength on the streets of Chennai? Yeah. The Bharatiya Janata Party Crazy. is sending out a political message also by ensuring that these kind of crowds gather when the right. Prime Minister, and every single time that the Prime Minister touches down now in Chennai, scenes that you see in other parts of the country, you're now starting to see in Chennai as well. So it's very intentional. But yes, as you pointed out, the Prime Minister also now in the black and white with the Veshti in this, uh, the checkered pattern there on the Veshti. Very, very interesting. Keeping those images on air, let's dive back into what's happening in the inaugural session. A blindfolded pianist. tell that everybody is awestruck with your performance, your gifts. Can you take it one step further? We know that you played blindfolded and you doubled up the speed. But what else do you have on offer today? Now I'm going to do a special performance. As everyone knows, I'm going to a, a, a Hollywood theme medley. And uh, I'm going to do a special thing in this uh, medley that is, uh, in my right hand, I'm going to play Harry Potter. Okay. And in my left hand, I'm going to play Mission Impossible simultaneously. Wow. 
So uh, <laughs> that'll be the special performance. We're waiting with bated breath. All the best.
Lady in not a sort of ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't that absolutely amazing? Lydian, you've mentioned in multiple interviews that you want to play on the moon someday. But I just want to tell you that your performance today ensured that we were all over the moon just listening to you. All the very best for a very bright future, Lydian. Ladies and gentlemen, as we await the arrival of one of our honorable chief guests, we have yet another wonderful performance coming your way. India's premier and most sought after sand artist, Sarvam Patel, ladies and gentlemen.
as Sarvam Patel works his magic. On popular request, by public demand, we have before you once again, ladies and gentlemen, the young genius, the prodigy, the super talented Lydian Nadeswaram.
Everyone the cavalcade of Prime Minister Narendra Modi en route to the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Chennai. Remember where the event has started and of course Prime Minister Modi is scheduled to be inaugurating the event in just about the next few minutes. But what mega celebrations that have been initiated. Prime Minister Modi there waving to the supporters who have been present. But remember heavy deployment. A lot of dance and colour also that has been presented not just inside the stadium but also for the arrival of the Prime Minister, for the dignitaries, for the participants. Take a look at that. Young performers there. Dancing right when Prime Minister Modi has uh, entered into the stadium as well, acknowledging all of, all these people who've been present there outside as well. Pramod Madhav joining me now from Chennai, tracking the latest. Uh, Pramod, before of course it's a serious tournament that's uh, scheduled to begin, but there is a lot of uh, culture, colour of the state of the country that's being presented to the international dignitaries as well. And uh, Prime Minister Modi just about to arrive now. Absolutely, Pooja. The sculptures and colors are a part of the state and that's the reason it's being depicted. It's a part of our country and it's been exposed in such a way that the people, the uh, players from other countries would get to notice them all. And here I'm trying to show you the entire stretch which is covered by BJP caterers, by PM Modi supporters. Everybody are standing at this location waiting for the arrival on one side. Just uh, in like half a kilometer from where we're standing, we have yes. the Nehru Stadium where the event is rolling up. The chief minister is already inside and and various players are being uh, like uh, they are giving very, they have brought in their flags and a huge ceremony a, a very uh, prestigious and amazing ceremony has, has already started we had Lydian Nadaswaram who is one of the fastest uh, piano players he was yes. inside he has uh, uh, given us a show over there and everybody are eagerly waiting for the prime minister who has reached uh, started from INS Adyar and on his way last time it was a big surprise for the supporters of uh, the BJP cadres and everyone because the convoy was very small Low. The Prime Minister took his time that he Correct. thanked everybody who were standing over there who were waiting for him for hours and it was an amazing uh, uh, like a roadshow at that point. It was not at all planned. So here also today, large gather of a large amount of people have gathered. They are expecting another roadshow. They want to see the Prime Minister and that's why you could see though the roads are empty, on either side of the road, a large crowd has gathered. Everybody waiting and for the Prime Tamil Minister. And administration and the government has left no stone unturned to ensure that this gets as mega event as possible. I mean, just looking at these visuals, not only inside the stadium but outside, what all has been planned? What all can you see around you? Because all I can see are these colours and events of music, uh, a sand artist, musicians, all of that. And it's absolutely fabulous to watch uh, what has been presented. It is definitely amazing and uh, the uh, uh, collaborators for this event was A.R. Rahman, Bignesh Shivan yes. and C various other uh, top artists from the state. Already uh, one of the important bridges in the, the Chennai called as Napier Bridge, that entire place has been uh, converted into a checkboard. It is quite amazing because it, within just a two weeks time period, what has happened is that chess has g gained so much prominence in the state of Tamil Nadu. In fact, if I had to tell you, each and every electric junction box in the state has been painted black and white and in fact the former chief minister Karunanidhi that is the chief minister chief yes. minister's father's memorial that has also been converted into a black and white checkered board so that way it looks like entire the state and city Pramod, of the you know, while of is, course is this is uh, the state board. and the, the country kind of flaunting the best of its talent whether it's in art whether it's in music uh, there's also a veteran actor Rajni Kant uh, with his daughter he's arrived at the inauguration ceremony uh, we also saw chess legend Vishwanathan Anand who's been also giving coaching and training to an extent to the Indian delegation. So of course it's the who's who present at this uh, Olympiad inauguration event today. <laughs> It absolutely is. Just like you mentioned, Rajnikanth has been showing interest chess in chess for a long time and that's the reason even today he uh, uh, posted a picture of him uh, uh, playing chess long time back on social media. And not just that, one of the important stars of chess, just like you mentioned, there are several grandmasters from the state of Tamil Nadu okay. and the recent and most prominent one is Pragnananda. So what uh, Rajnikanth did was that he brought, he uh, invited Pragyananda and his family. His sister Vaishali is also a very prominent uh, women uh, grandmaster 
Master. He had spoken to them. We today earlier we spoke to Vaishali, and she yes. said that it was a memorable moment speaking with Rajni Khan. So that way he has shown very much. Like, so politicians, uh, actors, in, musicians, uh, everyone's been, been able to now come and be attend this event. This is of course apart from uh, the delegations and dignitaries that have come from across the world. Uh, stay on with me, Pramod, because Akshita Nand Gopal has been speaking to not only the Netas but the residents in Chennai. Akshita, over to you. What are people telling you? What is the ground mood like with India becoming the first time hosting the Chess Olympiad in Asia after 30 years? Teachers, come inside. Yeah, Pooja, uh, I hope you can hear me through the audio. I can. Uh, yes, we just go saw ahead. this grand show uh, of support for Prime Minister Modi as he went by here uh, for, from the BJP. I have with me Mr. Vinod Selvam as well. A uh, grand, grand welcome for Prime Minister Narendra Modi. There's a huge sense of pride for every Tamarian today, isn't there, over the Chess Olympics? We Absolutely. We're very thankful to the Prime Minister for giving Chennai the chance to host such a prestigious event. I think it's happening for the first time in India, and uh, Tamil Nadu should be really proud of hosting it. This shows the kind of love and affection the Prime Minister has towards the state and uh, he is here today to inaugurate the ceremony himself. We all remember that a month back he had started the torch to lay the first of its kind which went to 75 different iconic places in the country and then it reached Mahabalipuram where the event is going to be taking place. Today India has been put on the global map with regards to a sporting event and uh, India is a, a country where chess was born and uh, played first and we have produced several grandmasters but it was unfortunate that the sport was not celebrated as much but today if you uh, walk around the city in fact the entire of the state you will find uh, chess being celebrated so much students uh, loving to wanting to learn the game and we are so thrilled and honored that our honorable prime minister is um, come here, he's with us in Chennai today, and within, in, a, in a span of two months. He was here two months back to inaugurate several projects, and again he's here today, and um, we're excited, absolutely excited. You know, what's going viral is also the pictures of Prime Minister Modi. He's dressed traditionally in a veshti, and also with the chess, the black and white theme that's spreading across the city right now. So, you know, even as the Prime Minister is clearly soaked in the mood, there's been a lot of questions about whether the central government deserves credit here, whether most of the steps have been taken by the Stalin government, about whether it's the campaigns in Chennai, or spreading the word or even ensuring that it happens in Tamil Nadu. The Stalin government has said, look, we did everything. See, any event of this size needs two governments to cordially act with each other. Only if the central government gives you permissions and the youth affairs, sports ministry, external affairs ministry, so many departments because 188 countries, over 2,000 participants from various parts of the world, all of them have to come in. In fact, one of the Grand Masters had tweeted about the immigration process being one of the smoothest he's seen anywhere in the world. So that needs a lot of cooperation from the central government. So the center has given all its backing to the state government to do such a beautiful event. So it is a very silly and very childish of the state government to be crying over uh, central government taking or uh, uh, in fact Karyakatas wanting the state government to acknowledge the uh, support which is being given by the Narendra Modi government for this event happen. In fact, people from various parts of the world who are here will only recognize Narendra Modi because he is more than a prime minister. He's a global leader today. He's a global icon. So celebrating him is the need of the hour and the Stalin government has to realize that. But at the end of the day, we're all happy. Uh, he's going to be on the stage and the chief minister is going to be on the stage and we just want this event to be a grand success in India to be proud of it. Thank you so much for taking the time out. I know you have to go inside, so all the very best. So you've got all these BJP leaders forming around me. I'm going to try to move to a corner as well. Uh, there's an air of excitement around here, Pooja, uh, as I report. You know, Prime Minister Modi has gone in, but you can see that even as people are dispersing, they're still here in large, large numbers. This entire road was closed up. This entire road filled with hundreds of BJP workers. This is something I was telling Shiv earlier. Uh, you know, as someone who's covered Tamil Nadu politics, yes. a couple of years ago, this would have been seemingly impossible to have these many BJP workers actually on the streets of Tamil Nadu, a state where the Bharatiya Janata Party has struggled, struggled mm. to get any sort of foothold. I'm not trying to suggest that they managed to get that foothold, but as far as the optics are concerned, they're going all out to ensure that they send across the right message. And I know that a few months back, when Chief Minister Stalin and Prime Minister Narendra Modi shared the stage here in Chennai, uh, there was a lot of politics that played out Correct. because Chief yes. Minister Stalin made those comments on the stage where he raised NEAT, he brought up GST dues, etc. 
This time around, we're being told none of that is going to happen. It's an international event. Yes. And so the focus is going to be on putting India first. So, so Chief Minister so no Stalin, political Prime Minister Modi, bickering, they're known for their bond likely, as well. And as Even you get us these reactions coming in, we're looking at the cavalcade of Prime Minister Modi on our screens, just about to reach uh, the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium. But what a proud moment for the state of Tamil Nadu, for the country as well. Remember, India is hosting the Chess Olympiad for the first time. It has come to our country and to Asia actually after 30 years and Indian delegation is the biggest contingent this time so whether it's the DMK whether it's the BJP today for the international audience they are going to be together on one stage to inaugurate Akshita and Pramod continue to be with me and Prime Minister Narendra Modi there waving to the audience uh, Akshita quickly uh, uh, before I go across to Pramod right now uh, this is also about Tamil Nadu managing to get the infrastructure together of course with the help of the government at the centre but for the bureaucracy, for the politicians to ensure that within four months after the acknowledgement of the hosting of the event to have the infrastructure, we're talking about 187 nations, 700 boards, 3,000 people. This is no easy task. Very, very true. And uh, hats off really to the administration for pulling this off. Uh, let me also tell you that the Chess Olympiad actually is happening in beautiful, beautiful Mahabalipuram Puja. Uh, you know, I'm at the historic yes. setting uh, of uh, the Shore Temple of Krishna's Butter Ball. That's where you're going to be seeing actually the Chess o Olympiad happening. Uh, that's about one and a half hours or so away from where we are right now. This is yes. literally the heart of the city. Stones throw away is Napier Bridge, which you've, of course, seen those iconic images. I think everyone in the country now is familiar with Napier Bridge because of the way they set it up and ensure that the entire place looked like a chessboard. So, you know, beyond yes. the preparations that have gone into this event, what's commendable is the fact that today everyone is talking about a chess Olympiad. Would we have been doing this in other circumstances? The reality is that the kind of buzz, the unique campaigns, the innovative steps they've taken to create awareness on the chess Olympiad. Mm. Chennai always has been referred to as the chess capital of India. But we too, I'd say, the media has been rather guilty of ignoring chess as a sport. That has That's changed true. now with That's this correct. kind of a step being taken. They've ensured largely uh, that there's a lot more coverage and focus on chess and hats off to the administration for pulling this off. Away and this is despite the, the historic connect of India with the sport of chess, with the grandmasters and legends that India has also produced. But Mahabali Puram's beaches and of course it's as beautiful as you know we've we've seen it how how amazing and beautiful mahabali puram's beach and just the cultural significance is and it's managed to get the host venue akshita please stay on with me because i have to go across now to pramod as well pramod so has uh, the prime minister reached the stadium uh, he was seen waving and acknowledging to the supporters and dancers there uh, where is prime minister modi at the moment Puja, just a couple of seconds ago, the Prime Minister reached the podium and in fact, this is a location where you can see a large crowd that has gathered and uh, over here, as he entered, he was uh, showered with flowers and the entire spot is covered with people who want to meet the Prime Minister. They have been waiting here for a good amount of time and they are all really happy because the Prime Minister also took his time. The convoy did not speed up. It came very slowly and there was flower petals as you could see on the roadside. It was actually, he showered with, he was showered with flower petals and everybody Welcome the Prime Minister. This is a very proud moment because 44th Chess Olympiad that is occurring in Chennai and the, prime, the state government has uh, done a considerable amount of work in it and the Prime Minister in a way uh, coming over here. It was uh, it is definitely a memorable moment, Puja. So Pramod Madhav is getting these uh, visuals of hundreds at least of fan supporters, not just of the BJP, but of course local residents, they're gathering, uh, which is clearly a pr proud moment for the state as well that's managed to pull off this event and Pramod Madhav has been speaking to all. Akshita, I want to come back to you because we saw a uh, veteran actor, Rajni Kant, we saw chess le legend Vishwanath Anand as well and all the other politicians also have arrived. But what I could see from these visuals coming in was how how a mega opening ceremony the government has managed to put together from dancers across the country, uh, putting forth the culture, the colours of Tamil Nadu, all of that, and clearly for an international audience. 
Very, very true. And I think some of the highlights of that ceremony we've been playing out here on India Today live as well. And it's been amazing to watch. It's it's truly a spectacle. Uh, there was a bit of confusion initially about where the Opli ceremony was going to happen. There was talk that it's going to happen in Mahabalipuram where the actual chess Olympiad is taking place. But instead they changed the venue and brought it up to, in fact, the heart of the city to Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium as well. It's been a huge event. And you know the who's who of Chennai is currently inside that stadium. Rajni Kant is there. A.R. Rahman is there. Of course, the entire DMK government, the opposition, everyone's together on this because, you know, while we've seen a lot of bickering with regards to posters, who gets credit, etc., I think everyone joins together at this very moment. They'll stand together and the messaging is very, very clear here uh, that this is a very, very proud moment for India. It's a very proud moment for every Tamarian as well. And that's where they're all united in celebrating mm. this very moment, this chess Olympiad that's brought together so many countries to one city. And already there have been so much talk on social media. Uh, many of the tweets of grandmasters who've said that, you know, the kind of preparations on the ground are unbelievable, are amazing. You know, at the Chennai airport, when I landed yesterday also, Pooja, there were so many boats that said, welcome to all of the chess champions. There were uh, posters all around, of course, of amazing. the mascot Tambi as well, uh, that was put up in several parts of the city. Tambi has become synonymous, essentially, with being a Chennaiite because of how long he's been out here on the streets of Chennai, celebrating the chess Olympiad with every single Chennaiite. So this is a grand, grand moment. It's a historic moment for Tamil Nadu. Chief Minister M.K. Stalin recognized that. Due credit to him because the fact is Correct. that this event happened because the DMK government swooped in. The moment they realized Russia is not going to be able to hold this event, uh, we heard that, you know, the International Fed, and, uh, Chess Federation yes. was looking around. Uh, there was interest that was immediately shown and in a matter of 24 hours, it was confirmed that Chennai would be the venue of and the that, Chess And that Olympia. swift and uh, proposal and approach of Tamil Nadu, Nadu has helped it clinch this host venue spot and the best of the best musician A.R. Rahman has composed the chess anthem as you see this uh, Olympiad event that's scheduled to begin. Now, Akshya Nath, my colleague there in Chennai, is tracking the convoy of Prime Minister Narendra Modi because that will be the highlight once he arrives. Akshya, over to you now. She sent us this report just about a short while ago. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> event is about to kick start in a short while from now. Right now we can see Prime Minister Narendra Modi has landed in Chennai and in front of your screens you can see the Prime Minister waving at the crowd from inside his car. He is wearing the white shirt, checkered Angavatra and the white That's Akshay Anad tracking the cavalcade of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And this, remember, is we are talking about 187 nations that India is all set to host. That's Prime Minister Narendra Modi arriving on stage at the Jawaharlal Nehru Stadium in Chennai. All smiles, PM Modi. Applause there from... From GMK Skani Mori, Rajni Kant, and of course... Narendra Modi We now welcome our honourable chief guest, the Honourable Pro uh, to have you here, sir, being on this stage, in this auditorium with you, enhances and exhilarates each and every one of us. Today is a day that we will remember forever and ever because this is a milestone and a moment that we will cherish. We'd also like to welcome the Honourable Governor of Tamil Nadu, Pira R. N. Ravi. Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Tiru N. K. Stalin. Union Minister for Inspiration, Broadcasting and Youth Affairs and Sports, Tiru Anurag Singh Thakur Avargar. Honorable Union Minister of State for Fisheries, Dairy, Information and Broadcast, Tiru L. Murugan Avargar. for climate change and youth welfare and sports development government of Tamil Nadu Tirushivavi Meyanavargal the president of the international chess federation Mr RKD Vorkovic Adutthadaga noor vigalal isaikappadum 
இந்தியாவின் நேஷனல் ஆந்தம் அதனைத் தொடர்ந்து தமிழ் தாய் வாழ்த்து அனைவரையும் தாழ்மையுடன் எழுந்து நிற்குமாறு கேட்டுக்கொள்கிறோம் all of you to rise for the performances of the national anthem of india followed by the invocation to the motherland mother tamil presented by james vasanthan's 100 piece choir requesting everyone to kindly stay risen for the national as well as the state anthem thank you thank you very much you may kindly be seated moving ahead ladies and gentlemen it is time for me to welcome the honorable minister for youth welfare and sports development government of tamil nadu tere shivavi meyanathan avargal to render the welcome address ladies and the dais and of the dais good evening i take immense pride in welcoming you all to india and to tamil nadu for the inauguration of the 44th friday jess olympia 2022 chennai aptly known as the capital of chess in india is all set to host one of the biggest international sporting events from 28 july to 10th august 2022 the government of tamil nadu and all india just federation have stood shoulder to shoulder and have here successfully raised against time to make the 44th just olympiad an unprecedented sporting experience for the players and spectators alike we experience we express our sincere thanks to government of india for extending all cooperation in this endeavor we deem it an absolute honor that our honorable prime minister tiru narendra modi 
is with us today to inaugurate the event. This Olympiad would not have been possible at the scale without the continued support and consistent encouragement shown by the Union Common led by the Honorable Prime Minister. We welcome the Honorable Prime Minister to this prestigious event. It's my pleasure to welcome Honorable Governor of Tamil Nadu, Thiru R. N. Ravi. Dreams come true, but for that, it is essential to conceive an idea in the first place. Our Honorable Chief Minister has made this possible. Being a sports person himself, he meticulously planned each and every step of this esteemed international tournament marked by the class and grandeur. It's my privilege to welcome Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Thiru Muthuvel Karunanidhi Stali. I would like to express my hearty welcome to Honorable Union Minister for Information and Broadcasting and Youth Affairs and Sports, Thiru Anurag Singh Thakur. We are careful for the unwavering cooperation and guidance of the Union Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. My special welcome to Honorable Union Minister of State, Thiru L. Murugan. It's my privilege to welcome RKD Tavakoch, President of PIDE, and all other dignitaries on and off of the ties. Ladies and gentlemen, we are extremely honored to have you here as our guest today. Sports transcends national, ethnic, racial, and linguistic boundaries apart from being a glorious first human excellence. After enduring one of the greatest health crises in human history in the form of COVID pandemic, here we are here. As one big family, we are as marked the global solidarity. With this spirit, we are extremely delighted. You have around 2,000 participants and thousands of spectators from all over the world. People of Tamil Nadu, welcome you all with great love and affection. Once again, on behalf of the government of India, the government of Tamil Nadu, and the All India Just Federation, I extend very warm welcome to all of you. We sincerely hope that your experience in Chennai will be cherished forever. In the Mahatana Nikalvi Kachi, Udangal Mulam Kandu, Kandu Makilam, Udangam Alam, Kodi Kalakana, Tamil Nanjakalak, Yen Vanakatayam, Waltukalin Kuri, Nerev Sigrain, Vanakam Nandri. Nandri, sir. Moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, we'd now like to invite the Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Dr. M.K. Stalin Avargar, to felicitate the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Thank you so much for being here once again. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, you may be aware that we are home to the oldest living language still in use. In addition, this is also amongst the oldest continuing civilizations in the entire world. Our next event depicts the genesis, the evolution of one of the oldest civilizations. This act, this stunning act, has been choreographed by Shama Dabar and performed by his dance company. And the person who has lent his voice to this act is none other than our very own Ulaga Nayagan Kamal Hasanavargal. Kamal sir, 
தமிழ் மொழி தமிழ் கலாச்சாரம் தமிழனுடைய பெருமையை காண்போமா Glorious bow and arrow, the emblem of the Cheras. 